Do you remember where you were when Half-Life 1 and 2 came out? Was you in your room? Or was you around your friend's house? I mean, I would like to know, so leave it in the comments below where you were. See, I was clubbing and I was partying and I also was in a relationship that took precedence over gaming at the time. Um, very young and full of beans. So I didn't get to play Half-Life 1 or 2 myself and not being a retro gamer I didn't really want to go back and play games that would give me a spoilt feeling. I mean it's okay if you've already played the original and then you go back just for some nostalgia. Uh, nostalgia, I can't say that word. Um, but you know when you haven't played it at all and you go back it's, it's just going to look very, like the graphics are going to look poor, the mechanics are going to be old school and uh, it's all going to feel bad. It's like I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan, but when that came out in 97, um, it was fantastic. But if I was to play the original 97 version now, I would think, oh God, these graphics were amazing when I first tried them. Now they look terrible and the mechanics is like horrible. And the mechanics is horrible because you just have to use the D-pad. There was no analog stick, I think, on the PlayStation 1. No, there wasn't. I knew that. And there definitely wasn't. Um, so yeah. And so, you know, and talking about retro gaming, you know, gaming, you know, since its birth, like with Asteroids or something on the Amstrad or something like that, it's come a long way. And I know if you expect Valve to bring out their baby, like Half-Life, onto anything but anything that's new, you know, not new, then you, you, who's your mistake? And they want something that's intuitive. They're, they're a company that wants to be intuitive. So... You know, if you're expecting it to be, you know, in um, normal gaming, as some people like to call it, or non-VR, or the VR community likes to call it flat gaming, um, then you're hugely mistaken. Uh, Valve, you know, they probably have got Half-Life 3 on the go, but they're probably like thinking, I don't really want to do this. Not on normal gaming. I want to be able to people to move their fingers and actually grab and reach things. I want to be intuitive, and that's what they're doing really with Half Life, uh, uh, Alex. So uh, you know, it's a huge statement um, from them to uh, to go to virtual reality for for you know the new new technology is because it's futuristic technology eventually virtual reality and um, AR will be um, the future of gaming um, and it will take off well you know it's it's going to be there but it depends on how non-VR people want to stall it you know um, and stalling is not a great idea eventually VR is going to be like you know ready player one it's going to be fantastic probably even beyond ready player one um, to the point of just are we are is this is this virtual reality that we're already in who knows right um, so this is not a reaction video uh, of the new half-life game Alex and this is because I've watched this many times I've already watched the trailer so many times already that you know reaction is a bit late now because my first reaction the 20 times I watched it was like yeah, they really did it. They really did it. That was the first 20 times. And, you know, that did change. Uh, you know, like the next 100 plus times I watched it. And yes, I watched it so many times. It, you know, I did change from that a little to a bit more of it's party time. Oh, yeah. It's party time. Oh, my God. I really want this game. You know, mm, you know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna just do a, uh, a breakdown of the trailer, and I, I, I'm constantly looking this way because this this I've actually written down some pointers just here, so I need to look this way. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do a breakdown of the trailer, and please remember that I can be a critic. Um, so if there's something I don't like, I'll say it's just my opinion, my honest opinion. If there's something I spot that I think's a bit kind of, um, you know, not perfect or just not right or graphically not great, great. And um, and I might say a word like, um, you know, like the mapping there is pretty bad and you'd be like, what, what's he talking about? 
even one you know what I'm talking about and you're thinking that's not quite correct or or two you don't know what mapping is uh, etc um, but either way when I'm saying something if I've got it right or wrong I'm pointing at something that I don't think is right you know so you know it's generally my opinion on on it so don't take it personally from what I've seen already it's gonna be hard to find anything critically wrong with this trailer it was just absolutely mind-blowing wasn't it um, so yeah I think that's that's all my notes pretty much there so yeah um, let's uh, let's break down the trailer <laughs> So, first thing, is this a new Steam VR intro? Because I, you know, like part, you know, logo, should I say? Because I've not seen that before and I quite like it. And I like the way they timed it with the breathing of the person. And I'd like to point out that just here, this is faultless. I mean, you've got a level of rust on here, you've got like shadowing here and on the bucket the bucket looks great and you've got clutter everywhere like you know like you can play vr games right now and it will just be an empty room with none of their stuff no infectious blobs of fungi whatever it is alien crap and no boxes hardly or maybe just one box or something and just tons of racks with nothing on them and nothing not even a flipping washing machine or tumble dryer or whatever in the middle there you know, and it's just a level of everything in here, like even the broken ceiling tiles, the piping coming through, there's just so much. And then you also then see that the lightning and the sparks. Just just look at that. Just look how that lightning lights up the area. And it's, even though it's dynamic lighting, um, and obviously not RTX or something like that, which is a shame, I'm sure RTX would be a monster on this, but this game's already a monster. If you remember how much you're gonna to need to run this, obviously you need already 12 gigabytes of system memory to, to run this game. So, yeah, and the physics here, where they grab the corner to go round. Now we've seen this in VR before, but you know, that looks just so flawless and smooth, right? I love that. And if you look at the glove, actually, this is this is Alex, right? Because that's the glove, right? That we see later on. And we've got lightning and sparks again. Well, I call it lightning. It's basically an arc of electricity, isn't it? But it's shaped like a lightning. And you see the creature run across there and the person noticing it and they're acting it out like in VR. It's just fantastic. Um, I'm gonna have to copy that um, somehow. So then again, clutter everywhere. This is just like laundry baskets, you know, uh, you know, the ceilings, the tiles, the stuff on the floor. It's it's just it's just so well detailed. Yeah, it's a bit kind of gloomy, but it's meant to be, isn't it? And if you can see the rest of the trailer, you'll see that it just doesn't, you know, the environment's changed quite a lot. And that's fantastic. I can tell you the amount of VR games I play where the environment's pretty much the same all the way through. Um, it doesn't change scenery hardly at all. Now, I think the level of detail here as well, we've got some screws on the table and we've Paris and, and, and a plastic or a polystyrene cup just here, which looks a bit warped on this picture, but you know, polystyrene cups can bend and warp. Uh, again, the level of detail, the level of like chucking stuff in here is amazing. And like the wear and tear on this, uh, on this here is just an, uh, unbelievable. Um, staircase and everything, it's just fantastic. So like, there you go, you can see the creature again. And then boom, look at this thing. Now, this is the VR person probably holding their hands up, right? Because we can do that in VR. But I just love to stop this moment here because I think the lighting looks great. I love the shadowing of it all. I love this thing over here, this um, sort of, uh, I can't remember what this thing's called anymore, but we used to, I used to, you know, I've been in jobs where they've got this sort of thing. Uh, and this thing is just, well, I don't know. Is that, I've, I, like I've never played VR, uh, uh, Half-Life games before, but this thing just looks like something out of Aliens. It looks horrible. Alex? Alex? I'm here. So what's the plan? Kevin's really picking up. And there you go, there's the uh, 
acting and then that's Alex I think that was played either by Meg or Mia or something before I can't remember what the name of the lady was and she's not actually reprising her role uh, for this Half-Life game um, I don't know if that's because of her or because of Valve or whatever but uh, she's not in it but a lot of the voiceovers are rumoured to still be her from the original games so yeah there's there's two actors probably playing Alex and uh, in this picture here you can see that there's so much going on again it's fantastic to see so much going on like even a pot of paint up there you know the level of detail is brilliant electric piping like you know plumbing soldiers walking past I know you're coming you need to get out and then <laughs> sorry then we've got loads of physics here like we've got like a, almost looks like a bobbly head and we've just got so much clutter again and it looks like you can move all of this now. aside and uh yeah she looks like she's holding two shotgun shells to me two um 12 gauges as well because trust me 20 gauges are a lot smaller thinner should i say it's long just as long but it's thinner uh and then looks like there's some sort of weapon attached to her, to the arm very good and here we are with the actual weapon doesn't this look weird i mean assets sometimes in games uh, can, can sometimes come from movies as well um, they're based on like Star Wars and stuff like that and they just look like old World War 2 guns or someone's just taken a gun and uh, it looks similar to something I've never seen anything that resembles this and I'm stopping it again but you seem to have a number counter here which is a bit weird because it looks like you can only fit two shells in maybe or, or maybe this is one no this is two shells right shoving in two shells at the same time and then there's some sort of like, is this a gas release here or something? I don't know, and a number counter. Well that number counter just went from red to something, right? And then you pump it, one of those rounds in, and bam. And then you've got loads of like, sparks and etc. Which is what you'd expect, realistically. Um... Yeah, the level of detail here looks pretty good as well. I love the physics there as well when they move things away. Now, this guy's back again, but he's um, his original character's passed away, sadly. So, you know, that's sad. So we've got a new actor for this guy. But, you know, uh, they said he's done a really good job of filling the shoes. It's, it's sad to see the original actors and all still with us. Voice actors. We're going to find out what love this the physics here is really cool but like what look at this guy here like he's, he's about to get face planted uh the physics of the gun coming up and everything is brilliant the guy the, the pushes and, and then looks and then puts the hands up it's all fantastic i want to go back there though I, I quite like the shadows here as well and um the lighting the lighting going through and i like the lightning light here you can tell it's a different light in whatever room that is and it's fantastic I just love that find out what he knows here he goes he face planted boom and then yeah I don't want to know what this is but it's got like a flipping like Gatling gun or something underneath it or some sort of like rail gun it's like nuts and they're gonna kill him uh, again you got some sort of like uh, looks like plumbing that though doesn't it not like a light so it's like a shower but you're missing the whole floor so it's like a building that's completely absolutely been wrecked and that well, looks like a crab getting layer lifted to somewhere and it looks like there's one here about to jump on your face or something. Oh, this, is my this is the train part now the interesting thing is the train looks a little bit like a half-life symbol doesn't it it's like almost that symbol but it's a very thin train. I can't imagine why they would fit in there. Um, maybe it's like a train that opens up. It reminds me of the the uh, transport units for the uh, droid army in um, you know Phantom of the Menace. You know when it opens up and there's tons of droids in it. Um, look, but look at the sparks that comes off the train as it comes around. It's absolutely fantastic. You got the light thing. You got a box over here. You got this, which looks super sharp, and you got the background detail. You got like moss growing and uh, you know weeds and stuff. Everything's absolutely oh, this is top my notch. And um, this bit here, you got a dumpster bin. 
cars. I mean, the clutter is just everywhere. It's fantastic to see that a level of amount of detail being put into it. Look at the detail on this tree just here. And I've actually bothered putting the thing, rallying thing around it as well. And the lamp posts are all in there and uh, whatever's built into this thing. Uh, it's fantastic, which is probably alien, God knows. I never and then you like this guy here is putting his cup down, which is an old style cup that your grandma probably had, but <laughs> it's familiar. I've seen a cup like that many times. I like the way it's on there and you've got this AR uh, uh, table. It's, it's fantastic. It, tables like this work so good in VR. You actually feel like it's it's really there in front of you it's, it's like you know you can't do that in real life but you can do that in vr well you actually you can it's starting to happen in real life with ar but you know not everyone's got access to that but you can get access to vr and you can experience that in this game it's fantastic and again the details all all there so is that the gravity gun being used there or she's she throwing that yeah she, you see, like, like Alex here is absolutely throwing a crate at this guy's head, and he's gone, oh, like Killzone dudes do, like, like everybody does when you hit them with something in a game, which is fantastic. And it looks like it's come out with the material that used to, uh, it's not like a magazine in there as well, maybe. Well, that's interesting. Um, so it's got stuffing material of the box as well, all flying all over the place. I couldn't, I'm so Brilliant. Again, great graphics, people hanging. Detail everywhere. All right, baby. This is just creepy. You really, not safe I love that though. This is what I'm talking about. Different environments. Now you're in sort of like a, it's got a wooden floor, which is just creepy and old, and it hasn't been cleaned in a while, and it's dirty. You've got a crab thing just here, and you've got also wooden walls, like old school. You know, wooden doors and ceiling that's like the plaster's cracking and etc. And the paint on it. It's fantastic. It's a complete difference in scenery. Uh, yeah, you just gotta love that the level of detail in that is just absolutely phenomenal. And this looks like a puzzle, so <laughs> spam for Lord. Sorry, I should probably not say that. Cannot prevent his feet. What are they though? Are they the aliens? Because oh, well, that's a dude with a crab on his face, right? Is that is that what that is? Oh, it's just that's gross, isn't it? That's gross. Prevent his feet. Yeah, look at that. Did you see the lightning then? Look at this. <laughs> Dude, you're talking about Emperor. Empire, you know what I mean? Uh, Luke, you know, freaking electro shot you. This guy's, you know, this electricity kind of like coming out of whatever he's coming out of his hands or whatnot. Uh, looks incredible, but also you know you got to look elsewhere when you when you kind of criticizing something or trying to criticize something because this is not exactly going very well for trying to criticize something here. But we've got sparks from the uh, lightning hitting the ground. We've got like so much detail on this vent here. It's 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 just nuts. There's scrapes, scratches. So the textures are just off the chart. I mean, look at the textures on this. It's just nuts. This is like a sewage pipe or something. It's, it's incredible. There's absolutely nearly nothing on this barrel, but when it comes out, you notice the barrel actually does get better. So it's incredible. That's obviously a brand new barrel. And then obviously dead guy here and all that. But this, this is pretty cool. Close your eyes. Right, just there where the sparks as well hit. It's, it's, look at these sparks fly out of you. Really good particle physics. That. And then more bad guys, I'm guessing the aliens or I don't know what you call them but when I paused this the first time it wasn't the actual aliens oops sorry I'm hitting the mic sorry uh, when I paused this the first time it wasn't the actual aliens that caught my attention it was actually this wall this this rock over here because just the level of detail on it it's just nuts and the light on it is is pretty good I just love the detail on this it's, it's incredible it's some nice detail compared to this bush over here which almost looks like it hasn't rendered in the you know complete textures or assets to it so um but you know i'm going to keep an eye on this bush i think later on but i mean the rest of it is just fantastic the aliens look pretty cool um they kind of look like something out of like a, uh space troopers is it cool yeah i think so hmm
this ship looks cool and uh, let me just say something like you know don't look here look here here and here as well this looks good this looks really good right but they bothered to add aerials as well and the level this is the point I keep going on about the level of detail but there's just so much detail in it and the level of detail is important in a game and you see it here it's it's very good and this side is just the best it literally has so much detail on the textures here it's incredible and an aerial sticking up there and you can see the buildings a little bit something's going on there don't know what though um, and obviously the level of detail on this ship is just phenomenal as well this is just nothing I've seen before and that makes that so great I think that's a ship it could be just a floating whatever you know floating house half-life Alex now I don't know why the smoking man turned up from uh, you know X-Files no. this is supposed to be is this the G-man I don't know you guys called him the G-man but I there's something in this I noticed when I first saw this other than I didn't I think thought this was probably one of the worst graphical things I saw in a whole thing until I watched it a few times and then I noticed something that I don't think mm, anyone else has probably noticed I'm not entirely sure but when he's actually moving out of the shadow um, that he's in he uh, swallows right but you don't really see him swallow so much but you actually see his Adam Apple pop out and I'm like who puts that level of detail in who who puts the level of detail in in the neck so don't look at anything else right nothing else just look at his neck where the Adam Apple would be right there you see it it goes in and then goes out like he's just swallowed it a little right oh, that's incredible that is really incredible <laughs> that is some serious next-gen level detail so uh, yeah what did we find at fault there was just a bush that looked a bit out of place but that could be anything uh, other than that there's nothing at fault you can't fault this game uh, you can't fault the trailer anyway um, as to the game we'll have to see when it comes out but yeah it seems like it's got everything you want a storyline good physics amazing physics to be honest and the graphics do look absolutely gorgeous and a lot and a lot of the places absolutely spot on and yeah it's got good acting by the looks of it as well I didn't question any of that, that I listened to and yeah wow wow you can see why the internet's exploding this is like uh, had the internet exploding and if you're um, if you don't have a VR headset and you're a little bit upset why it's not coming to flat gaming or normal gaming or a non VR gaming whatever you want to call it because people call it a different way people that don't have VR call it normal gaming people that have VR and only play VR mainly call people that play normal gaming flat gaming and people that don't want to offend that have VR some say say not non VR gamers um, it's Valve have done this because it's intuitive and you can see why they did it it's it's it brings Half-Life back to life in a way most people probably wouldn't be disappointed I mean if if they were to do a Half-Life 3 in normal gaming or non VR gaming, whatever, um, you're going to, uh, you're just going to get better graphics, some extra physics, maybe a little bit, um, and that's probably about it. It's, it's not going to be revolutionary, it's not going to change that much, but in VR, it changes a lot, it changes a hell of a lot, and that's only the beginning as well. I mean, VR is still at its early stages and eventually it will be beyond player one uh ready player one by far because um you know ar is going to play a big part as well uh of it so can you imagine actually you know some of the assets that you see in this game being actually in your room with you you know so you know the crab thing being in the room with you you, you know it's 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 crazy
absolutely fantastic so yeah there's nothing to criticize really about the game uh, the trailer the trailer is absolutely amazing and I did kind of criticize Boneworks if you remember because I kind of thought well Boneworks looks like a great physics engine it's got some of the best physics I've ever seen but it didn't it looked a bit bland the textures looked a bit bland in areas so to speak um, the color palette was okay but the story didn't seem like it was there even though they said it's going to be a single player story um, and then you look at this Half-Life game, Alex, and then you suddenly think, well, that's got it all. That really has it all. That's up and beyond. So, yeah, I can't find a fault with this. So let's uh, let's pop to the outro anyway, because I have to announce the uh, winner of this week's uh, competition to see who wins. Well, there you go. There is a breakdown of Half-Life, Alex, and yeah... Game of the year 2020? Mm, I think very much so. Uh, I think it's going to be released on the 22nd of March, right? So, yeah, looking forward to that. Pre-order if you uh, haven't pre-ordered it already. And, uh, yeah, if you've got a Valve Index, you get it for free. So it's already in your library. So, uh, yeah, good luck for you. I mean, I have an Index, but I actually got it gifted, so it didn't get transferred. So, gutted. Anyway, I've whittled down the competition winners of this week um, to Jurilio and Mainfam. And I'm going to make Mainfam heads and Jurilio tails. So we're going to actually work out who wins right now. So here we go. And it is Mainfam. Well done. Heads. Why is it always heads though? That's the problem. That's why I don't like doing this. Because I said it would be heads. Heads again. <laughs> Now it's tails. I guess it, I guess it can be like heads or tails. I'll do it. There you go. Heads twice, tails once. So main fam is a winner. Well done, main fam. I'll uh, DM you with um, a key, a uh, random key of your choice. So well done. And if you want to win a random key, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell button, and also make a comment this week to uh, be in the next draw next Sunday. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, yeah, I'll have you a long time. Ciao.